Did you ever notice that we humans are very proud of our own intelligence? We are the self-proclaimed most intelligent species on this planet. And okay, we are pretty smart. Throughout human evolution, brain size and intellect have increased drastically. But humans are only a tiny part of the animal kingdom. So, what happens in other animals? Do they benefit from being intelligent? Does problem solving and fast learning help animals to survive? Does evolution always lead to larger brains and higher intelligence? Or can the opposite happen? Let's find out. And let's start with the first question. Do animals benefit from being smart? Well, the main advantage of cognition is that it allows behavioral flexibility. Learning and problem solving should help animals to change their behavior in response to new environmental challenges. And to illustrate this, I want to tell you a nice little story. This happened back in the previous 20s, when milk was still delivered on your doorstep in these fancy glass bottles. Now, people in the UK started to notice something very strange. Every morning, the tin foil on top of their milk bottles had been broken, and some of the milk had been drunk. Now, the usual suspects were teenagers, but the real culprits were something far more sinister. Birds. Some blue tits had figured out that by packing open the tin foil, they could drink that delicious milk. And other birds in the population had seen this and started copying this behavior. And through social learning, this milk-stealing behavior spread to large parts of the UK. It even happened multiple times. And these innovations, as we call them, are not unique for this case. They're actually quite widespread in the animal kingdom, especially in bird species with larger brains. And this is clearly beneficial, right? Because it gives these birds access to completely new food sources. But, as every student of Darwin should know, evolution will only occur if cognition actually helps these animals to survive and reproduce. And this is something that actually very few studies so far have been able to prove. But one series of ingenious experiments was performed on this small fish species, the guppy. Researchers started breeding these animals and selecting for relative brain size. So in one group, they only continued with the offspring of the parents with the largest brain. In another group, they only continued with the parents with the smallest brains. They repeated that a few times, and after three generations, the two groups differed on average 12% in relative brain size. Now, among biologists, there is a bit of, uh, it's a bit of controversial whether larger brains equal smartness. Luckily, the researchers tested this. They gave these fish an, uh, what we call a reversal learning task. So first, they were trained to associate a certain color with food. For instance, going to red means food, going to yellow means nothing. And as soon as the fish had mastered this task, the researchers would switch the colors and then measure how long it would take these fish to figure out that they had been bamboozled. And indeed, 
die large brain fish change their behavior much faster than the small brain fish. But here's where it gets interesting. The large brain fish and small brain fish were rela released in large aquaria together with a predator. And every week, the researchers would check which animals were still alive and which had been eaten. And indeed, in the end, large-brained females, but not males, were more likely to survive than small-brained females. So that's nice, right? Being smart is good. Hypothesis confirmed. But there was a follow-up study that revealed something very interesting. What would happen if you place the same fish in a more boring, less challenging environment where there is no predation and food is abundant? The exact opposite. Now the small-brained fish live longer. Why? Well, being smart has a price. Cognition requires expensive neural tissue. While you're sitting there, listening to me, your brains are using something like 20% of your body's energy. Or at least I hope they do. So the larger these brains become, the less energy is left for other body parts. That's why the large-brained females started aging sooner. They also had um, a lower immune response, produced fewer offspring, and had smaller guts. And this is something you should remember, because it's something that we see throughout the entire animal kingdom. Big brains, small guts. But of course, natural selection is not the only way that cognition might evolve. Sexual selection is also a force to, force to be reckoned with. Perhaps cognition allows you to reproduce. Perhaps being smart is considered sexy. Although in humans I find this very hard to believe. Just take a closer look at the speakers tonight. Anyway, this hypothesis was directly tested in what is probably my favorite scientific experiment ever. Female parakeets were introduced to two males. Researchers scored which male they preferred, and then the unpreferred males, the losers, received some very intensive training to learn how to open a puzzle box with food. The favorite males were not trained and could never figure this out on their own. Next, the females got to choose again. But this time, after they saw each male attempting this difficult puzzle. And then something truly amazing happened. They changed their mind. I think that's some pretty solid dating advice. Look smart on Tinder. <laughs> okay, but why choose the smart guy? Perhaps the smart guy is a better father. Perhaps cognition allows you to find more food for your children. And indeed, in one population of great tits, it was found that pairs where both parents were able to solve a new problem, fed their young more frequently, and raised more chicks. However, there is always an however in science. When they repeated this experiment a second year, this was suddenly not the case anymore. Solvers and not solvers did not differ in reproductive success. Now, the second year was after a very harsh winter, so perhaps there was less food available during the breeding season, and these smart parents with their large brains 
might have struggled. Okay, short recap. Sometimes being smart is good, sometimes it's not. Let's rephrase the question, when is it good to be smart? Well, there are plenty of hypotheses out there, but the one that I want to talk about is the cognitive buffer hypothesis. The cognitive buffer hypothesis states that large brains and higher cognitive abilities mainly evolved to help animals survive changes in the environment, which makes sense because if everything stays the same, you don't need to learn. Imagine being a cab driver. It probably requires a lot more memory skills, navigational skills and flexibility to drive around in a large dynamic city like Antwerp compared to something small, rural, boring, where nothing ever changes. Leuven. And indeed, in many animals, it has been proven living in more variable environments means that you're faster in learning new information and solving new problems. This cognitive buffer hypothesis might even explain how other animals got so smart. Elephants have the reputation of being quite clever. And in a recent publication, Researchers uh, try to reconstruct the evolution of relative brain size throughout the family of elephants, mastodons, and mammoths based on uh, fossil data. And they discovered that relative brain size increased drastically at two points in time. Two points in time that corresponded to periods of climate change when the landscape of Africa changed drastically. And perhaps the elephant ancestors with the largest brains were better able to handle this situation. So, being smart is good if life is unpredictable. That's a nice conclusion, right? However, Nature keeps surprising us, and sometimes evolution finds multiple solutions to the same problem. Researchers from Washington University looked at the evolution of relative brain size in birds, specifically in the most northern regions of our planet, Alaska, Siberia, where winters are cold, harsh, and food availability is unpredictable. But surprisingly, birds living here either have very large brains for their body size or very small brains. As you can see on the graph, there is literally no middle ground. Okay, the large brain species, we can understand. Larger brains, cognition helps them to survive. But what are those dim-witted dummies doing here? <laughs> How are they still alive? Well, remember the guppies with their big brains and small guts? These birds did the exact opposite. They invested in very elaborate guts at the expense of having smaller brains. Because they feed on all kinds of plant material, like twigs, conifer needles, that's very easy to find all year around, but very hard to process. So being smart is one solution, but not the only solution. I think that's worth remembering because, okay, we can call ourselves the most intelligent species on this planet, who is going to complain, but we should remember that many animals that we would consider stupid are still able to thrive and survive, sometimes in very challenging environments. Animals don't need to be super smart. They need to be the right amount of smart for their environment. Thank you. <laughs>